Okay, there we go. So I got my screen fired up. We're ready to rock and roll here, folks. So uh, once again, I want to welcome all of you to our session here today. And uh, I know uh, a lot of you folks, I recognize a lot of names here. I know you've been to uh, a lot of my webinars in the past. And for those of you who are joining us for the first time, just a couple of quick things that I want to uh, make you aware of here. That First of all, when, when, when we host a webinar of, of this nature, one of the unique things is, first of all, all my sessions are indeed live and they are interactive. So uh, these sessions are meant for learning. Yes, I do have some, some wonderful services and whatnot I'd be happy to share with you towards the end of the call. However, uh, we spend the bulk of our time here talking about usable granular strategies that can be implemented in your marketing. That's what I like to do is give you usable strategies, good ideas, get your brain functioning from that creativity standpoint, thinking of things in a lateral way, all right? Now, I do have something uh, very important that I want to share with you at the end of today's call, and that is a question that loan officers have been asking for years and years and years, and that is, how do I turn leads into applications? For those of you who are capturing leads, or even if you're just buying leads now, whatever your source of leads are, a, a, a big problem for loan officers these days is converting those leads into applications and I'm going to give you guys a strategy and give you the answer to that question on how you can double or even triple your conversion rate and that's that's it for those of you that stick around to the end of the call so I'm going to share that nice little tidbit with you because it just flat out works all right so make sure you stick around for the whole session uh, another thing I want to share with you is your questions are important so please ask go ahead and type into the chat box if you have questions as they pop in no such thing as a bad question the more questions the better okay so absolutely love questions because these are interactive sessions so with that said let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and get started here so today we're going to talk about the solution to lead generation during the slow season and uh, really guys I know we're getting just so freaking close I can't believe what time of year it is already this year just absolutely flew by and uh, just looking at the fact that, wow, you know, next month is um, Halloween. I'm seeing jack-o'-lantern and pumpkin-flavored everything in the stores now. And I'm not complaining. I, I love, I love uh, pumpkin-flavored things, and uh, the fall season is absolutely wonderful to me. Uh, but it just got here a lot quicker than I anticipated. I don't know about you guys, but it just snuck right up on me, and I'm just thinking, wow, where did this come from? <laughs> um, but really, the, the, the challenge for a lot of loan officers is that, Towards the end of the year, things do tend to, to die down for, for the, the vast majority of originators. Um, and, it, and it's not just all in your head, because there are some loan officers that say, well, it's wonderful for me, so that means it's all in your head. But really, the, the fact of the matter is that during the month of December, for example, um, even just going by Google, um, and, and Google reports the statistics for different keyword searches, right? And we can see that searches for uh, real estate and mortgage-related topics and keywords actually drop by 60%. So we're not looking at just some, hey, it's all in your head and it's, oh, it's just mindset or anything along those lines. No, that's a very real drop in production because there are 60% fewer individuals actively searching in the month of December. And that, that dip actually starts um, in late October, early November. So we're, we're actually just about a month, about five to six weeks, uh, uh, quite frankly, away from this dip really starting to come in hard. So November through January is genu uh, genuinely what most loan officers consider uh, the slow period, and therefore a lot of them start to take their vacations. I mean, even I know when I send out my emails and I'm talking to loan officers from November through early January, I can't tell you how many resp auto responses I get back saying, oh, hey, I'm on vacation for the next three to four weeks, blah, blah, blah. You know, that's just natural. You know, a lot of loan officers save up their vacation towards the end of the year, and that's when everybody's just popping out thinking, okay, well, there's... Not a whole lot of originating to be done, so now's a good time to take my vacation, right? Also, we run into the fact that you get a lot of people that are just looking, so they're dipping their toe in the water, but it's not going to turn into anything anytime soon because they're kind of sitting around waiting for that spring market, so they're looking at March and April is probably when they're going to start taking things serious, so a, a lot of loan officers just don't spend time on those folks because, well, you know, if they're not buying for four months, then you know, what can you do about it? Um, and also, guys, the, the frustration with this is that instead of having 12 months to reach your goals, for a lot of lenders, it means, well, 
it's almost like I only have nine months or, you know, nine, maybe 10 months. If, you know, I, I want to consider October um, is still a, a good month, but you only have nine to 10 months to reach your goals as opposed to a full 12. That's the way a lot of people view it. So, uh, so they kind of treat those final two months as a passive origination, you know, maybe even all the way through mid to late January. So, so that's no fun is that we now have to cram more into a shorter period of time. So that's, that's the feedback that we get from a lot of loan officers. Um, but, but really, when we start looking at this, guys, there are some solutions here. And that's why I ask these questions as to, you know, hey, what's your month looking like? You know, or what's your year looking like? You know, what can we, um, you know, what can we improve? And what can you do? And what tweaks can you make to make this year better and look at this quote unquote, slow period and actually turn it into one of the best months of the year, despite the 60% drop in individuals that are hunting for a home, right? So uh, go ahead and ask yourself these questions now, really. Um, how can I better manage my leads and improve my audience? How can I improve my, my predictability? Now, predictability, when I'm talking about predictability, I'm talking about it from an income standpoint. And how can I grow my follow-up and successful touch rate. So when leads do come in, how can I successfully uh, touch with these individuals on a positive level and engage with them and nurture them to turn them into closed transactions, into full-blown applications as opposed to just some leads sitting off there in a database, you know, collecting dust. And the reason we ask ourselves these questions is because uh, when we actually seek answers to these questions, these are the three things that can absolutely turn that slow period into your busy period throughout the year, right? So I asked the question a little bit early um, in the call. What can you know? What, what's your year shaping up to look like? And some of you guys saying it's, it's right on target, looking good. Um, some individuals saying that they're they still got a long ways to go. Um, so it, it looks like about seventy, uh, somewhere around seventy percent saying that they still have quite a ways to go and about 25 to 30% saying that they're pretty much either on track or at least close to it, okay? So it still looks like the, the, the majority of individuals not quite where they want to be just yet. So, so now we have to kind of adjust the question we're asking ourselves and say, okay, well, if I'm not there yet, for those of you that aren't there yet, is it still possible in these, these final... Uh, this this final quarter that's sneaking up on us, can I still make it? Do I still have enough time to make it? Well, if we if we turn that into your best months of the year, what would that do for you? Would you then be able to hit your goals? Okay. So so what we're going to do here on this call, guys, I'm going to show you uh, what I would do in that situation. If if I was looking at my year, going, you know what, not quite there. Or even if I am there, um, okay, maybe if, even if I am either on track or close to being on track, you know, would I complain if I had two or three absolutely awesome months <laughs> uh, that are historically not quite the best or easiest of months when it uh, comes to an, an income standpoint? So here's what I would do if, if I faced those questions right here, right now. Okay, and, and that is I would start off with a marketing audit on my business. Now, when I say a marketing audit, what I mean is actually sitting down and taking a look at the answers to these questions and then taking action accordingly. So here, here's what a marketing audit typically looks like. So the first thing that we have to do, guys, and where a lot of loan officers run into trouble uh, when it comes to their lead generation strategies and, you know, it's, it's I get all this feedback of individuals saying, well, I just don't know what to do or I don't know where to begin and I, I don't know, you know how to run a good ad. I don't know how to convert leads when they come in. You know, people aren't responding to emails or phone calls. You know, a, a lot of those challenges completely vanish when we know the answers to these questions because we, what we need is what we're really looking for is clarity, right? We're looking for crystal clear action, but for, for any business, whether you're a one-man show or whether you have 100 loan officers underneath you, it doesn't matter. The, the bottom line is, is you still need metrics. You still need a starting point. You still need numbers. And for most loan officers, they don't have those numbers because they haven't performed this internal marketing audit on their capabilities and where they stand. So the first thing that we need to know is, okay, how many leads 
on average am I generating now? So how many of you guys know the answer to that question? If, if, and I don't mean just a, a rough guess. I mean, boom, you know down to the number how many leads you have coming in um, on a, a, a daily basis, a weekly basis, a monthly basis, a yearly basis. How many of you guys know those numbers? Or, or maybe if you don't know it off the top of your head, you know, have you at least done some sort of an, an, a marketing audit um, to where you could just go and grab those numbers to where you've written it down before and you've, you've pulled those statistics and can see exactly how many leads. Now, this is important because really business is all about, it's just a big numbers game, right? That's really all it is. If I know my numbers and I know that X amount of leads turns into X amount of applications and X amount of applications turns into X amount of closings and that it costs me X amount of dollars to generate each lead, then it's just a formula at that point. There's no mystery there. There's no question marks. I know that if it costs me X amount of dollars to capture a lead, and this percentage of leads turn into applications, and this percentage of my applications actually close, then I know exactly what I need to go out and do. Okay, well, if I'm spending $400 a month on my marketing and I'm getting this amount of closings, then if I spend $800 a month on my closing uh, on my marketing, here's what I can expect. Right? We, we want to turn this into a formula because it simplifies things. Guesswork rarely results in happy outcomes. When it comes to your business and when it comes to your income, guesswork is generally not a good thing, right? <laughs> I'm sure you guys, wouldn't you guys agree? It's not a good thing. So, so we need to know the numbers. How big is my audience? This is the next question. So when I say an audience, when I say an audience, guys, what am I talking about here? Well, I'm talking about everything from social media. I'm talking about your email database. And when I say email database, I'm referring to your, whether it's a CRM or, or you, you dump your leads into an email autoresponder or even some of you guys still just uploading it you know, or, or saving it into Excel uh, spreadsheets and files and, and working from there. No matter how you're doing it now, we still need to know how big is that audience because here's the big question that I always ask myself when I'm about to engage in something new from a marketing standpoint or I need to give my income a nice big shot in the arm. The first thing I need to know is, hey, when I make this pitch or when I have something important to say, how many people hear me? And the answer to that question is this down here. How many people do you have in your email uh, database or in your CRM? How many people watch you on social media? And that's typically a Facebook fan page. How many followers and how many people actually engage and see your posts, not just phantom followers that never see anything, right? So we, we need to know those numbers because if you know those numbers, then you know exactly how many promotions and what you need to spend on your promotions to get the desired result, okay? How about my conversion rate? So <laughs> I, I put this little caveat in here, actual numbers because guesstimates are wrong. I put that in here, guys, because, you know, I've been doing this training stuff with loan officers since 2005, okay? And the one thing that I quickly learned even when I first started was that when I ask most people, and this applies to any industry, whether I'm talking to attorneys or uh, you know medical professionals, loan officers, realtors, doesn't matter. When I ask people what their conversion numbers are, they'll usually throw something up, you know right off the top of their head. But whenever we start digging into it, the general rule of thumb is either chop that down by between 50 and 70 percent, and you'll get the real number. Most people way overestimate, way overestimate what their actual closing numbers are. Whenever we look at the actual numbers to prove it, numbers that we can't argue with, it's typically at least half or less. So that's why we need to know the real numbers because guesstimates, otherwise the, your entire business and foundation and your marketing efforts and what you're spending and what you're investing your time in is all going to be based on a lie. It's all going to be based on half the actual performance. This isn't about ego. I don't care if it's a 10% conversion rate or a 5% conversion rate or a 50% conversion rate. What we, what we need are the real numbers because then we can actually calculate what needs to be done. My consistency, okay, am I going to stick with this? Am I tracking my numbers? What's my email deliverability look like? Now, I sent out a, um, a YouTube video about three or four weeks ago, guys. I really hope you watched it about email deliverability. I don't know how many of you guys... Uh, took a look at that. Um, it was only a couple minutes long, but it showed you how to find out if your email is actually on a blacklist using free software. 
because there's more loan officers on these email blacklists than than are not. And even when I ran it on my own email, at least three or four times a year, I end up on an email blacklist as well just because of the sheer volume of emails that I send out. It's unavoidable because what happens is all it takes is somebody, a, a couple, a handful of people to just click the spam button when they're reading your email and boom, you end up on one of these blacklists. Now the problem with the blacklist is that up to about 50% of the emails you send out might not even be getting delivered. Now, I don't mean just ending up in somebody's spam box. I mean completely blocked, and you would have no way of knowing it unless you checked these blacklists. So make sure that you watch that video and, and run a scan on your email to make sure you're not on one of those blacklists because a lot of loan officers could be getting double the results completely free just by getting their email removed from one of those uh, blacklists. And it's, it doesn't cost anything to do uh, to run the check or to get yourself removed. So I strongly recommend everybody and their brother should be doing this right now because these blacklists stink. I've ended up on them many times and people say, hey, Chad, you never emailed me. You never responded and they'd be upset with me. And I'm telling them, no, actually I did. And then they're wondering if I'm just making that up. And yeah, it's, it's not a good situation. So make sure you're removed from those blacklists. And then finally, my diversification. What sources of leads am I tapping into or am I putting all my eggs in one basket. So that's what a marketing audit looks like. We ask ourselves these questions and when we get those answers, guys, this is what we can build a complete foundation off of and plan our quote unquote slow month and turn it into something that's absolutely amazing. So we're going to talk about the steps now. That was just a bird's eye view, but now we're going to actually start getting into the nitty gritty of what it takes to turn these slow months into busy, 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 okay? So, so the first thing, and this is, I know it's cliche, but well, failing to plan is planning to fail, right? We've all heard that saying a million and one times. So let's, let's take a look at this sample plan to get through the tough months, okay? So let's narrow things down. The first thing that I would do if I needed to have my best months ever is I would first find and segment serious home buyers. I say serious home buyers. Now, it can be home buyers or sellers because most of the sellers out there are selling because they're buying another home anyways, right? So they're going to need the services of a loan officer. So when I say find and segment them, I'm going to, I'm going to show you how to do that here um, as we go along. But right now, again, we're still kind of at the, the, the bird's eye view here. The second thing that I would do is after I figured out and, and gotten these people to raise their hands and identify themselves, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to drop tracking cookies. Now, does everybody here know what a tracking cookie is, or is there anybody here that's unfamiliar with that term? Just go ahead and let me know in the chat box. Okay, there's nothing, nothing wrong with that if you're not familiar with that term or completely clear on what a tracking cookie is. So I have no problem going into that. But basically what I want to do at this stage, guys, is I want the number in the hundreds. Okay, I want to identify uh, hundreds of individuals. Okay, so I see a couple people asking me to expand on tracking cookies. So a tracking cookie is, the best way I can describe it is if you've ever been to Amazon.com shopping for something and then suddenly over the next couple of weeks or even couple of months you start seeing that product everywhere and you're going, oh, hey, you know, they, <laughs> um, they, they must know what I'm doing or they must know what I'm shopping for. Well, the reason they know what you're shopping for is because they have these tracking cookies. They're little applets or little, just think of them as little miniature software programs that, that drop onto your computer and identify you as somebody shopping for a particular product. Well, we as loan officers can do the same thing for these home buyers by getting them to click on one of your ads or, or even just an article or a blog post, it doesn't matter what it is, or just go to a landing page or even just visit your website. You can drop one of these tracking cookies on their computer that identifies them and these cookies last for six months, for six months. And, and so you build an audience of these individuals, and at the click of a button, you can rerun ads to them, just like Amazon does to you. And I can't tell you how many times I've actually bought from those things. Certain items that I've been shopping for, but maybe I just got kind of busy or, or never quite purchased something. But then three weeks later, I say, oh, yeah, I, I, you know, I thought I was going to buy that power bank for my cell phone. So I stopped ending up without power when I'm you know, 500 miles from home. You know, yeah, that, that just worked on me the other day. <laughs> so I went out and bought a power bank my uh, cell phone. It works. 
it's, it's good, sound marketing. It's building your audience. So we want to drop hundreds of these before the busy season gets here. See, we have to change our mindset because a lot of loan officers, they just look at their marketing as lead generation, lead generation, lead generation, meaning I got to capture leads now. So when they think of their audience, they just think of leads that have given them their name, their email, their phone number, and told them to call. And those are great and wonderful. But marketing is evolving and changing, guys, as technology changes. And the smarter way to go about it is instead of just instantly always going for the lead capture, what if we identified individuals by dropping these tracking cookies and built up an audience? I like to get it around five to 600 people strong before this drought, the slow season gets here. And now when November through January rolls around, at the click of a button, I can run ads to these five to 600 people that I know were already engaging in shopping, home shopping behavior before the, bit, the slow season even got here. And now some of them are gonna start popping. Some of them are going to start converting. Some of them are actually serious about buying because they can't wait till um, you know, April, May to roll around. The people who are starting their shopping in August and September are different from the people who start their shopping in December and January. Those people aren't going to buy till the spring season, but the people that are shopping before the holiday season even gets here tend to be the people who are probably have some sort of impending event and are going to need to buy even during the holiday season. Because even though um, those numbers drop by 60%, if we pre-built a list of people in advance, we did our marketing while things were still pretty busy. So it's like stacking up on, you know, it's the squirrel that's stacking up on the acorns before winter rolls around, right? Versus the guys who wait until it's too late, and now they're trying to go out there and, you know, bury their, um, find acorns in the middle of winter, right? So we want to mine this audience, and again, that needs to be in the hundreds if, if, if it's going to pull you through those uh, slow seasons, right? So once I've created this audience, guys, now I turn my audience, I segment it into micro audiences. So we shouldn't put all our eggs in one basket. So what's a micro audience? Well, a, a big audience, a broad audience is just, hey, anybody who needs a loan. A micro audience is when I start narrowing it down to saying, okay, I have 600 people here um, that I know need the services of a loan officer or we're shopping for the services of a loan officer in August or September. But within this group, I have 150 of them that are looking to refinance and consolidate debt. I have 200 of them over here who were actually shopping for a home. I have 200 of them over here that were specifically looking for VA loans and so forth. So based on the type of items they clicked on, articles, blog posts, videos, whatever the case may be, my tracking cookies identify what they were looking at. So the guys over here watching stuff about VA loans, well, obviously I know those people are most likely veterans or active duty and looking for a VA loan. So boom, they go into my VA loan category. These guys over here that were reading articles about high interest debt and blah, 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 how to consolidate and whatnot. Obviously, these are my refi prospects that go over here and so forth. So we segment so that we're sending appropriate messages to the right party at the right time. Okay, most, most loan officers, most of your competitors aren't doing that, guys. So let's look at some sample targets that I might use in my compartmentalization here. So people, for example, who read articles, blogs, or watched videos on home buying go into one segment, right? But then I'm also going to have separate articles, blogs, and videos on home selling. I'm going to have separate articles and blogs and videos on VA loans, separate articles and videos and blog posts on debt consolidation and so forth. It's very simple. But again, when you look at most loan officers' websites, they, they don't really compartmentalize them. They don't segment them, and they don't initiate these tracking cookies on each article to identify people so that you know what they were looking for. Instead, they say, well, you know, if they didn't fill something out, then they probably weren't a good lead anyways. But we know that's not true, right? 
if you guys have been on my, my webinars before, you know how I've been using the same analogy for years, but I'm going to use it again because it works. How many times? How many times have you stepped foot into maybe a furniture store or decor store or, or on a, a car lot? And you're, you're actually looking for something in particular, but the salesperson comes over and they look like that type of person who's going to just hoover over you and what, and you're just not in the mood. So when they ask you, what are you looking for? What do you say? Come on, guys, help me out here. What do, what do we say typically? That's right. I'm just looking because we don't want to be bothered, even though, yes, we are looking for something. We are looking to buy. We tell them, oh, I'm just browsing. Oh, I'm just whatever it whatever it takes so that they don't bug you and hover over you because we don't want them invading our personal space. But but in the event, what happens if you're just browsing, quote unquote, <laughs> and you stumble across something that you really, really want to buy, but you need information on now? Suddenly we're the ones hunting down that salesperson. And this is exactly how it works online. Is we're we're a lot of loan officers are just writing off the people that are essentially the online version of, hey, I'm just browsing, when the reality is they're actually looking for something, you know, they're looking for information, they're looking for answers to questions, they're looking for peace of mind, because people don't read about home loans for fun because this isn't fun, right? That's one of the advantages of being in an industry that's, that's not recreational in nature, is you know who, it's, you generally know that, hey, when, when somebody you know, darkens your doorstep, so to speak, it's because they need something. Even if they say they don't, well, I'm, you know, I'm just kind of looking right now. Well, something in the back of their mind brought them over here. And it's usually because, hey, if I'm not doing something now, I'm probably going to be doing something soon. So we have to segment them with our tracking cookies. And for just so you know, guys, you can get your tracking cookies from Facebook. It doesn't cost you anything to deploy these tracking cookies and build these audiences, right? It's completely free to do, so why aren't we doing it? Or if you're using a CRM software or a database um, or an email autoresponder software, some good email marketing software, a lot of those will now provide behavior-based tracking cookies that last forever. Unless the person actually goes in and deletes their cookies, they last forever. And just so you know, statistically speaking, 70% of people never clear their cookies. Here in the U.S., 70% of people never, ever, ever clear their cookies. When you say the word cookie, they think of a baked good. They don't know what a tracking cookie is. So that's good for you because now that means for 70% of the people you drop these cookies on, those cookies last forever. So that means even if they go and read an article about buying a home today but don't do anything or, or take any action until next July, boom, that cookie will still be fired. You'll still know that, hey, oh, they're back on the site reading articles or watching your videos about buying a home. I need to market to this person. I need to run an ad to them because they're, they're engaging in buying behavior. Okay. So let's, let's go ahead and let's, I'm going to show you guys, um, because this, this really starts to organize your marketing. I'm going to show you guys where to find the, the, the tracking pixels, the tracking kit cookies in Facebook. So you can do this, right? This isn't just theory. I, I want you guys to actually do this because uh, what it can do for your business is absolutely freaking amazing. Okay, so give me give me just a moment. I'm going to exit my slides here. Um, and I'm going to show you guys. We're going to go to Facebook. And uh, let's see here. You should be seeing that pop up here any moment. And boom. Okay, so, so I'm over at Facebook now. So when, when you log into your Facebook ads manager, you have this green button up at the top right of your screen that says create an ad. Okay, right? That's what, that's basically you want to be on that same screen as me. But at the top left of your screen, you're going to see where it says Ads Manager. See that right up here? And you got these three horizontal horizontal lines. That's where we want to go. We want to click there where it says Ads Manager. And um, when we do that, no, okay, looks mine, mine's just freezing up here for just a moment. Give me just a second. There we go. So. I want to hover my cursor over this little link down here that says all tools. Now from within here, I have an option to um, click on where it says pixels and audiences. These are the two most important links that I need to do this. Okay, so let's start off with pixels. So this is the tracking pixel. So when I use the word tracking cookie, 
I'm, I'm using that term and tracking pixel as interchangeable because they are both the same thing. Okay, so let's let Facebook go ahead and load. All right, so perfect, perfect, perfect. Okay, so now, now it's showing me my, my tracking pixel page. Now, for some of you, this may look a little different. Okay, so, so your, uh, your tracking cookies or pixels may look a little bit different depending on what part of the country you're in. That, that's nothing to worry about, nothing to freak out about. That's just the way that Facebook works is they don't roll everything out <laughs> the same all over the country. So um, for some of you, your, your page is going to look a little bit different, but I already have my pixel set up. But for those of you who do not, you're actually going to have an option over here, typically at the top right, that says create pixel. And that's what you're going to want to do. So that's, that's where you go and you just simply follow Facebook's simple instructions to create your tracking pixel. It really is that easy. Um, Facebook's going to walk you through it, but that's how you get to it. And they're going to give you a little code that you simply copy and paste onto your website because that that is where you have the capability to begin dropping these tracking cookies. So let, let me go ahead and click to set up as if I'm new. Okay. So again, you can see that I've already installed this pixel for this particular ads account, but I actually have a setup button right here. So let's, let's go ahead and pretend that I'm brand new and just going to set it up. Okay. So I'm going to get this window here that gives me multiple options, but I'm just going to do the manually install the code yourself option, which is right smack in the center for me. And this is that little code that I just mentioned to you. Okay, so it's telling you what to do. We just follow their instructions. And now here's the actual pixel code itself. So I can click to copy that code. And now all I do is go over to my website and paste it into the code itself right where Facebook tells me to, which they tell you right here to locate the header code for your website. Now, for some of you guys that look at this and go, well, what the heck is a header code? And oh, I'm already confused. I don't know what to do about this. Then you could literally hire somebody for like 30 bucks, 40 bucks, 50 bucks, whatever, to do it for you. If, it's, if it starts to get confusing or you think you're gonna mess up your website or mess up your code, then it's worth just hiring somebody for 30, 40 bucks to do it for you because you know what? This is going to give you access to a whole new form of marketing. This is what gives you the capability to do all of the things that I'm about to show you. This retargeting and building audiences and tracking people's behaviors and all this stuff. You got to have a tracking pixel or tracking cookie. And that's what this little, little tiny code down here allows you to do. Okay. So we just need to make sure that this code is on your website within the header code and then we can confirm it down here, boom. When Facebook gives you that little green light, you know you're good to go, I'm done. I now have all new functionality. So once I've done that guys, I can come back up here to where it says Facebook ads again. And I go back to all my tools and now I go to my audiences page. So that's the new option that I'm clicking on. Audience, remember I said that you really, really want to start tracking your, your audience. You want to track their behavior, what they're doing, and all that fun stuff. This is where we have the option to actually create an audience right here. Okay? So that's what I want to do. That's what I want to do is I want to tell Facebook, okay, um, I want an audience for refinance. I want an audience for general purchase. I want an audience for VA loans or, or whatever. But Facebook allows you to create these audiences and then track when they click on your stuff and click a button and run ads to them on an ongoing basis for as long as they remain in this audience. Okay, and how cool is that? So does that, does that make sense? Do you guys see the value of, of segmenting the people who click on your ads into these specific groups of individuals where we can run ads to them on an on-demand basis? 
it really does give us a lot of new functionality. And this is where you find it within Facebook. See, the idea, the idea is I, I create these audiences and then now I know, okay, well, I got these people here who responded to this campaign. I'm going to create and run an ad to them. Oh, and I got people over here that responded to that campaign. So I'm going to create and run a separate ad to them and so forth. So I'm customizing my message is what I'm doing. I'm making sure. Um, okay, so how do we how do we target them with our next campaign? Uh, let me let me show you. So so once once you have your your audience created, um, here, here's what you do. You you click here where it says to create an ad, and and you go about the process just like you're creating a regular ad. Okay, so I go into Facebook and tell it okay. Um, So let's say I'm targeting refinances. Okay, so I would click to create my ad. And when you go into Facebook, remember what we typically do if you've watched a lot of my other webinars or videos where I talked about how to set up your ads um, here by putting in your targeting, target city, age bracket, gender, and all that other stuff. Well, it's actually even simpler to target and create a campaign targeting those individuals in your custom audience instead of coming in and filling all of this out. All I do this time is I click this drop down box up here that says use a saved audience and boom, I just select whatever appears in my drop down box, whichever audience I want to uh, target and it auto populates. I'm ready to move on. That's all I got to do is literally that's it's two steps. I click the drop down, select the group that I want to run ads to, click on it, I'm done. So I can scroll on down and go down to my budget and everything else it takes to set up my ad. That's it. It's that simple. Pretty cool, huh? I, I like when things are simple because there's so many things that are um, unnecessary complicated uh, these days. So it's, it's definitely um, nice when things are this straightforward and simple. So pretty cool, huh? Awesome. Awesome. So for those of you um, who might be looking at this going, wow, this is kind of confusing, you know, you're kind of moving too fast. Keep in mind, I have covered these steps in a lot of my other webinars. That's why I'm kind of breezing through this particular portion is we're, we're talking about the concept of it as opposed to the step by step, just because you can go to my YouTube channel and see, I, I probably got about seven or eight different videos on there over the past two to three years covering these exact steps. Okay. But right now, what I want you guys to understand is that in addition to running Facebook ads, what you need to start doing is using the tracking pixels and using the audiences to segment these individuals that you're tracking so that you can come in, create an ad, click the saved audience button, boom, run an ad only to those specific individuals who have already raised their hands and said, yes, I'm looking to do something. Now, see how this relates to your slow season? So instead of coming in here and just blindly running ads to hundreds of thousands or even millions of people. Instead, I come in and say, okay, well, I've been dropping all these tracking cookies, you know, since September. So now I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to use my uh, custom audiences and run ads only to those people who have already clicked on my ads and are in those custom audiences. So I'm not trying to target anybody anymore. I'm not just trying to target every single person out there. Now I'm only targeting those people who were interested enough to click on my ads previously, which is pretty darn cool. Okay, does that make sense? So we're, we're no longer spraying and praying and just cost, uh, casting this, this super, super broad net. Now we're marketing only to those people who were already in, expressing some sort of interest. So the question becomes, okay, well, that's all fine and good, but um, Chad, how do, I, how do I uncover these people? How do I get them to raise their hands and identify themselves, right? That's, that becomes the, 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 the big question. And really what it all boils down to, guys, is just think of it as your mousetrap. Just think of it as your mousetrap. See, more often than not, if you put the cheese out, you'll catch the mouse, right? If we don't, if we don't, then the problem is typically that we're either A, we're using the wrong medium or platform to market to them, B, we're using the wrong bait 
or there's a problem with our targeting. See, the, the, the average loan officer or real estate agent or whatever the case may be, um, what they'll do is they'll, they'll hear this stuff about Facebook and tracking pixels and whatnot, and they'll say, oh, wow, that sounds really cool. So they'll go out there and they'll, they'll run an ad, um, but they won't get any results, so they'll come back and say, oh, man, this sucks. You know, the, the, it's, it's terrible for capturing leads. It doesn't work. That's the conclusion that they draw. But the reality of the situation is more often than not, we're, we're either just A, using the wrong medium, or B, the wrong bait, or we're targeting the wrong individuals. If we can, if we can eliminate those problems, if we can eliminate this, then we will get the results. It really is that simple. See, it's, it's a process of elimination, really. Let me, let me give you an example. Um, I, had a, um, I had a client who was, was running ads in, in one of my masterminds, and everybody else from the mastermind was coming back, going, well, I got you know, X amount of leads and applications this week, and that person over there got this amount of leads and applications, and that person over there got... Well, this guy came back and said, well, I got none. He said, I'm really, really frustrated. Apparently, you know, Facebook ads just don't work in my area. So I said, well, I said, I really, really don't think that we can draw that conclusion. You know, that would be like, you know, going out and trying to start my car. And if it doesn't start in the morning, drawing the conclusion that internal combustion engines just don't work. You know, we, you just can't say that. You know, it's, it's typically that means that there's something wrong in the process. So I said, OK, well, let's start eliminating certain things. So we, we actually dug into his ads. And here's what we found is that in his particular market, um, what we were finding was Facebook actually allows you to see what devices people are looking at your ads on. And what we found was that Apple devices, um, when people were viewing his ads on there, he was being charged almost $4 for clicks. Whereas when people were on Android devices, he was only being charged 83 cents per click. <laughs> so he's paying over four times as much or clicks on Apple devices as he was on Android devices. Now, I'm not saying that that's true everywhere. It just so happened to be in his particular marketplace. So what happened was since he only had a small budget of about uh, 75 bucks to run his ad for the entire week, he didn't get a whole lot of clicks. He only got about 12 or 13 clicks for the whole week. And, you know, he was already almost all the way through his entire budget, whereas everybody else was paying less than a buck. They got four and a half times as many clicks. Therefore, you know, law of averages, they got leads, they got applications. So upon seeing this, I said, here's the solution. Let's just go ahead and tell Facebook to stop running ads to people on Apple devices for now. We can examine this later and figure out why you're paying so much. But let's just go ahead and turn it off for now and let's rerun your ad. So we did. And boom, lo and behold, he started getting right along the same lines of uh, uh, results as everybody else. Point being is it was the process of elimination. We just had to eliminate what didn't work, what was causing, what monkey wrench was causing this not to work, whereas he was ready to throw in the towel and say, oh, this just doesn't work. And that's what most loan officers do. But really, if we look at even the, 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 the multi, multi, multi-billion dollar corporations out there and all the big success stories over the past 120 plus years, we see that the concept never changes. The biggest successes in history, even just in, in your day-to-day -day life, Everything is a process of elimination. If we eliminate the things that don't work, what we're left with are the things that do. But first, you have to take action and you have to track. If we're not tracking, then how can we go in and investigate and cut out what's not working and be left with what does? And therein lies the problem and also the solution for 99.9% .9 of loan officers marketing challenges is in this core concept. It's just right here. We're left with what works when we eliminate what doesn't. So the question is, okay, that's all fine and good as a concept, but when implemented, what's that look like? Well, let's look at what we can throw out there as bait. What can serve as the cheese to attract the mice? Well, I don't care what you use, guys. There's a lot of different tools out there, but just make sure you're using one of them. The very most basic is articles. I can put good articles out there. I can put blog posts out there. I can perform surveys and quizzes. I can put a video out there. A video is actually a favorite of mine because um, these days, fewer and fewer people will read something and more and more people will watch it on video. We recently saw the statistics that more than half of all activity on the internet now is video, people just watching videos. 
in some format, either on YouTube or on some other website or embedded into forums and message boards. I mean, wherever it's happening, it's, it's in video format, more than half of all activity on the web. Um, another favorite of mine is using Realtors' own bait. Because what's the one big advantage realtors have over loan officers? It's that they have better bait. I mean, I'm sure we can all agree on that. Whether you love or hate realtors, guys, you got to admit that they have better bait. Because our industry is just downright boring as a consumable to the average person, right? I mean, nobody uh, who doesn't need a mortgage goes, man, I, I really got to go and check up on my loan officer's fan page and see what's going on in the world of mortgage finance right now. No, nobody does that. But there's tons of people who will share all sorts of videos and multi-million dollar homes and 20,000 square foot homes and beautiful homes, this and that. No, oh, here's the best kitchen. And oh, holy cow, look at that bathroom. Look at that finished lower level. Look at that six-car garage. I mean, people will still like to look and fantasize, right? So it's a more shareable viral medium than ours. So my big question is, well, then why the hell are they the ones, the only ones that get to use this? Why can't we? There's nothing stopping loan officers from leveraging homes as bait. If you team up with the realtor and say, hey, how would you like to get more eyeballs to your properties? All I need is your permission to insert this into an ad or that into an ad or, or just use it as bait, guys. Tap into it. And then drop cookies on the people that are actually going back and looking at the, the fine details of the home, not just looking at the pretty pictures, but the people who are interested enough to go to the page itself and start looking at all the metrics about the home, all the data about the home, you know, such as tax information and, you know, how old is the house, how many square footage, you know, the things that people don't care about when they just want to look at pretty pictures, right? We can delineate between those two activities with the tracking cookie, and that's pretty darn cool. So we don't drop the tracking cookie on the people who are just looking at the pictures. We drop the tracking cookie on the people who go in uh, a little bit deeper into the process because we know those are the people who are probably serious about buying. See, that's where a lot of loan officers go wrong. The, for the few loan officers that do leverage homes as bait is they treat everybody the same. And they assume and drop tracking cookies on or, or try to capture leads of just anybody that's looking at the pictures. I don't do that. I tell my tracking cookie to only fire when they're on certain pages and taking certain activities. That's when you get the really good leads, right? So there's a lot of nuance here, right? <laughs> um, infographics. I love infographics because they can go viral. Infographics are awesome, guys. Infographics are when we take something um, that would normally be just boring information, but we make it visual. A good infographic can become viral and be shared for free to hundreds or even thousands of people in your area when people just go, ah, oh, this is really cool information. So, but again, most loan officers don't take time to create infographics because it is time consuming and you need to hire a good graphics person typically to make it. But I'm telling you right now, it's worth it because it gets shareable, especially if you're using and giving good usable information within that infographic. So this is what I use as bait, guys. Any any of these, and there, there's a, I mean, I could add a, a 20 more items to this, but this is just kind of breaking it down to some of the basic things that you can do um, that your your competitors are not. See, the people who avoid this type of content say, oh, I don't want to be like a, you know, I'm not a writer and I'm not good at making content. Well, then then outsource it. I mean, I don't care how you do it. Just get the content out there because when you do, you have bait, you have the cheese to draw them in and drop that tracking cookie. And if we can drop that on five or 600 of them before November rolls around, you have yourself a big enough audience to get you through the slow season. Now, what kind of expect, expected results you know, are we looking at here? Well, I, I mean, I can't tell you what to expect on, on your end naturally. But what I can do is tell you uh, th this is pretty typical um, in most markets, for me at least, um, if I built an audience in the hundreds for each segment, then it, you almost have to be trying to fail in order to fail <laughs> when you when you built it into around the five to six hundred mark. Okay, that's the magic number for me. And and the reason it's hard to fail is because generally speaking, what I found is even if ninety percent or eighty five to ninety percent of individuals don't take action through the holiday season, that still leaves ten to fifteen percent of them do. 
And these are kind of conservative numbers because I've seen some markets be in the 20 to 25 percent range. So let's take that smallest number, the most conservative number of 10 percent. And let's say that you've, you've dropped 300 cookies for people who are looking to purchase homes. And then you've also dropped 300 cookies for refi. Remember I said you got to diversify. You can't put all your eggs in one basket. So I got 300 people um, in my custom audience on Facebook for purchase transactions. And I got 300 people for refi. So it means I put some kick butt video or, or a picture of a nice house and links to it or something out there to get people to click. So I got 600 people. At 10%, guys, that's 60 people. Even using the smallest number of 10%, that's 60 people who will actually take action and get a loan sometime within that holiday season of November through January. 60 people. Now, I ask you, how many of you guys have closed 60 loans in that, um, that, that down season <laughs> from November to January? I'm, I'm guessing very, very few. And how many of you guys would be happy to close 60 loans through that time period? Now, I'm not saying you're going you're gonna to get all of those people. But this goes back to the question I asked at the beginning of the call that you need to ask yourself when doing a marketing audit of yourself. And that is, what's your average closing rate? If you know your average closing rate, then you can come up with an answer to this and say, okay, Chad, out of those 60 people who take action, I know that based on my closing percentage, if I had had you know, them in my audience, here's how many of them I would have closed. Is your closing rate 30%, 40%, 50%, 20%? I mean, I don't know. Only you know the answer to that or should know, the, at least go and take action to get the answer to that. But now what we've just done is using the most conservative number possible, 10%, we've identified 60 individuals that will actually take action and either buy a home or do a refi. Because let me tell you too, guys, even during those uh, slow seasons, during the slow months, you're going to run into people who need debt consolidation. I'm sure you guys have seen that before, especially right after Christmas when they start getting those, those hefty bills in for all the crap they bought and all the gifts they bought and the holidays and the liquor and alcohol. I mean, it, yeah, it all adds up, doesn't it? You know, decor, they got a new tree. <laughs> Suddenly they're going, oh, holy crap, you know, now my monthly payments have just skyrocketed. I got an extra five, six grand on here. I mean, I don't know how much they spent, but a lot of people do go kind of nuts and spend a lot of money. And so they're, they're very susceptible and very open to hearing your comments and your options on how they can reduce that debt again and get themselves back into a reasonable monthly payment. Right? So it's not a bad time to also be going after those refis. And that's now business. I know how many of you guys love now business. <laughs> a lot more so than, okay, well, that's three, four months down the road business. Well, you know, the, the, the people that say, okay, well, let's, let's do something now. Um, that's always pleasant to hear. So, again, we're looking at, a conservative number here. Um, a lot of you folks will do even better than that 10%. A lot of you guys will fall in that 15 to 20% bracket. It just depends on, on, on where you're at and what group you're targeting, what, what niche you're going after. So let's do some, um, let's do some creative, creative thinking here, guys. I, I want to stimulate your, your, your creativity. So, um, one of the little mental exercises that I love to engage in is uh, when, I'm, when I'm setting up something new from a marketing, uh, marketing angle, I, I try to stop thinking about it from a how do I close more loans angle and instead at a new angle of, well, how can I just get more people who are looking to buy or sell a home or reduce debt to identify themselves? Because it's that whole adage of, you know, how do you eat an elephant? one bite at a time, right? And oftentimes I think that loan officers will overwhelm themselves because how impossible does it seem when you just ask yourself, ah, how am I going to close more loans? You know, it's, it's now the slow season. What, what am I going to do? I, 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 need to, I need to do X amount of loans, you know, to get through, you know, financially speaking, get through the next three months. 
And, and that's, that's almost an impossible question to answer. It's overwhelming to the brain because there's no easy answer because it's such a loaded question because there's so many moving parts to that. But it's so much easier and you actually get better perspective when you instead just ask yourself, well, how can I get people who are looking to buy or sell a home or you know, who need debt consolidation to identify themselves? You know, what kind of articles would they click on? What kind of blog posts would they find interesting and exciting or stimulating or helpful? What kind of videos would they like to see? You know, when it, when it comes to homes, guys, um, videos of homes, <laughs> actual real videos as opposed to you know, little slideshows. Uh, you know, people like the real stuff because uh, it gives them a better look. So there's lots of things that we can do that will get people to click and take action. Okay, so let me, let me give you a real-world example, um, again, because I, I just want to stimulate your creativity. So I'm going to tell you something that, that I did for a client who, who really wanted to tap into something like this. And, and they wanted to go the route of using uh, real, uh, real homes as bait. So, so here's what we did, is we actually created a, a portal just like Realtor.com or Trulia.com or Zillow.com. We said, okay, you know what we're going to do? We're going to tap into IDX and, and MLS. And we're going to create your own hyper-local portal. So it's almost like a clone of Realtor.com or one of these other tools, except it's only for your target city and county. So people who are Googling and looking for homes for sale, when they see something like Realtor.com versus something that's unique and specific to the exact area that they're looking to shop for, which do you think is going to be more interesting to them? So, ooh, hey, here's a place that just has homes in the areas I'm looking for. That's awesome. So it's going to be, we tend to think of those things as more personalized and more relevant, right? So, so that's what we built. And anybody that goes in there and we set up the tracking cookie so that anybody who looks at more than a certain amount of homes or looks at certain information and on certain pages, we drop the tracking cookie on. And then we set up his um, CRM tracking cookie to let him know whenever they read articles specifically on getting mortgage financing. So he'll actually get an email from his database saying, oh, hey, these five people this week read articles about, you know, uh, how to get approved for a home loan or how to pick your best realtor or how to do this, how to do that. So he, he actually is getting these flagged leads as being hot leads. And this all happens while he's asleep, no matter how busy he gets. <laughs> Pretty darn cool, huh? So I'm, I'm just stimulating your creativity as to what you can do with a little dash of um, uh, creativity being applied, right? Do, can you guys see, do you, do you see how that can really make a difference in your lead quality or, or in how you follow up when you're finding out what people are interested in, what topics automatically, just on an automatic, automated basis from your, your tracking cookie, just telling you? what people are looking at, it's, it's really hard to beat. I mean, that's, that's what technology allows us to do in this day and age. So when people say things like, you know, the old ways of marketing are, are, are dead, <laughs> this is what they mean, right? Pretty, pretty powerful stuff. Okay. So let's, let's just make this crystal clear. Let's, let's clarify exactly what we're saying here. So basically what we're doing is to just really sum it down to the basic, really distill it to, to the fine core of what we're talking about here. We're using their interests, their consumption of your material, no matter what form that may be, video, article, blog post, Facebook post, I don't care what. Whatever it is they're consuming, we're using that as an identifier. People who are watching stuff about refi, go into our refi category. People who watch stuff in the home buying category go into home buying category and so forth. So we're using that to segment. And even if you don't capture a lead, we don't really care that much because what you need, what you're focused on right now is building your audience. And guys, that's where a lot of loan officers go wrong because they're, they're, they're scared. And I'm not faulting anybody for this because I understand the mentality behind it. But what I'm telling you is it's something that we have to overcome because a lot of people are not confident enough in their own marketing to take this approach. Instead, they judge the success or failure of everything they're doing based on how many leads they captured. 
So when we run marketing campaigns and we're spending money on marketing, but we're not capturing leads, all we're doing is dropping tracking cookies, they start to freak out. And go, oh, oh I'm, I, you know, I, I don't have any leads that I can close right now. Well, again, we're, we're not worried about the right here and right now. What we're worried about is the slow season and, and pretty much the entire future of your business. Because if we drop enough tracking cookies and build a big enough audience, sooner or later, you won't ever have to run cold ads ever again. What happens when you have 1,000 cookies, 2,000 cookies, 3,000 cookies dropped? You never have to cast that broad net and market to a bunch of people cold again unless you want to. See, when you simplify your goals to this extent, the tasks become much simpler. Yes, we know we're going to eventually capture the leads. It's inevitable. But first, we've got to build up that audience. So you you, you got to... You got to have confidence in your own marketing process to invest your time and funds into building your audience first. That's the way we do it here in 2017. So let me show you um, some statistics as far as what, what I typically recommend for most loan officers, um, depending on how many loan, extra loans they want to close on a per monthly basis. Is um, and I see some questions of individuals asking for recommendations on, hey, is there anybody that can set that up for me? Um, yeah, we, w we will definitely uh, talk about that, Tim. For those of you looking at all this going, you know, that sounds great, but holy crap, <laughs> I, I would nev never in a million years know where to begin on something like that. You can definitely reach out to me. That's the, these are the things that I do. This, this is what me and my team do, and we have been doing for a very long time. This is our expertise. So I'm more than happy to, to uh, work with you folks or at least talk to you about working with you um, on doing this sort of thing. Okay, so how many loans do you want to close? Um, so, so I put them into three different categories. The first category is supplemental. These are the loan officers that come to me and say, you know what, um, I'm already doing pretty well. I'm not greedy. I just want an extra, you know, one or two extra closings per month. I just want to enhance my current income. I don't need to be top of the world right now. So for somebody that's in that category, I generally recommend that they set up two landing pages, not just one, but two. Um, and that they have two to three different ads that they can rotate between so that they don't grow stale, and then have two to three calls to action. And a, a, a relatively short follow-up cycle is usually more than enough to get that extra one to two closings per month. It's not hard to get into that category, guys. And, and I mean, even though we say it's, it's not much, I mean, still, at, at, the, at two extra per month, that's 24 extra closings for the year. So I don't know about you guys, but what would 24 or even 12 extra closings or even somewhere in the middle, between 12 and 24 extra closings a year, if you were to do that math in your head real quick, how much more income would that supplement you by? How much more income would you be looking at for the year if you had an extra 12 to 24 closings this year? So even though it's just we're, we're, we're dumping it into the, the supplemental category, that's, that's still not anything to sneeze at as far as a nice, a nice solid jump in spending money for you, isn't it? I mean, it, it gives you fuel where you would have a whole lot of extra advertising and marketing dollars, too, if you so chose to, to use it for that purpose, right? So the second category that I, that I, I tend to see is loan officers that are looking for a, a pretty significant jump over their current income. And these are the guys that come in and say, you know, well, I'd really like to do three to five extra closings per month. So these are the guys looking and saying, you know what, I want to do an extra 150, 200 Gs, you know, or 250 Gs extra this year, blah, blah, blah. Well, three to five extra loans in most areas will get you there, depending on what your payment structure is like. I don't know, um, you know, what your payment structure looks like. But for a lot of you folks, three to five extra, I mean, we're, that's 36 to 60 extra closings for the year. I mean, on the higher end at five extra closings per month, that's more than most loan officers will close on an average month, in fact. And you're using that to add on top of what you're already doing. So to get there, I typically recommend not, not one to two, but rather three to four landing pages so that you can rotate between them again. And the same with your ads. We don't want to put all our eggs in one basket. You're going to want about five ads to rotate and have three to five calls to action. You, you don't want a super short follow-up cycle. You want a, a medium level follow-up cycle. And I also recommend at this level that you begin establishing real estate referral um, processes, you know, getting getting the groundwork laid for that. Um, in fact, you can actually use and leverage the leads that you're pulling in from the front end to get these guys down here. When you can approach agents with actual leads in hand, they treat you a lot better, don't they? Because now you mean something to their bottom line. 
So it's very, very powerful leverage to be able to approach a realtor and say, hey, I got some deals. You know, I got some prospects, you know, that, that haven't picked out a realtor yet, you know, but they're actually actively looking at homes right now. And so the agents will love you forever for that one, won't they? <laughs> so it's pretty easy to get the referrals rolling. And how many of you guys uh, would agree with me? I, I would much rather hot referrals than just a, a regular lead any day of the week, right? How many of you guys agree with that? I will take one solid referral. If it's coming from a realtor that's giving me good deals, not, not these, I'm not talking these trash can deals. You know, the agents that will give you these deals that have been turned down everywhere else and they just give it to you as a Hail Mary just to kind of, you know, hope that maybe, just maybe there's a chance you might be able to do something for them. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about an agent that is serious about giving you their best deals, their best referrals. I will take just one of those over 10 leads any day of the week, right? Because they're already sold on working with you because they've already been told how good you are. So, so that's why we want to take and use this as a leverage point. And then finally, we got the final category. And these are the loan officers that fall into the top producer category. These are the guys that say, hey, yeah, I want to do an extra six to 10 deals per month or even more. I had uh, one guy said he wanted to do an extra 20. He wanted to be in that top 200 list, um, and he wanted to be top in his company. So he said, I'm dead serious about this. I'll do whatever it takes to get me to 20 closings a month. Um, okay, then great. It's, it is doable. I'm not saying it's going to be easy because, you know, you got a lot of work ahead of you, but you can still get there. So six to 10 extra closings per month. I recommend five plus landing pages, five plus ads to rotate, five plus calls to action. The reason I just put five plus is not just to be overly vague, but because a lot of that depends on what uh, niche you're going after. So I don't want to overly generalize here. So I'm just putting five plus. For some, it may be more, some it may be less. And for your follow-up, you need a multi-pronged follow-up cycle. So a follow-up cycle that includes email, texting, voice, and video. And you're going to need multiple real estate agent referral sources. But all of this is very doable. It is very doable. It seems overwhelming because that's, I mean, it, you know, if you're just starting from scratch on getting those types of processes set up, yeah, there's a lot that needs to be done. But, but it can definitely be done. That You're looking at exactly what's needed to get you to that next level. But for, for most loan officers, the problem is that they look at this list of stuff and say, well, that's overwhelming because I don't even have one predictable landing page and sales funnel <laughs> set up. You know, how on earth am I going to do five plus, you know, or, or three to four or, or <laughs> uh, whatever, whatever we're talking about here. For a lot of loan officers, that's just, wow, you know, that's just too much. It's overwhelming. What, you know, how do I get there? And uh, don't worry, guys. I, I promised you some really cool information at the end of today's call about um, – uh, how to convert more of your leads. And don't worry, I'm getting there. I'm getting there, but but I, I do have to talk to you about something here real quick first. Um, and uh, what I want to talk to you guys about is a marketing audit. So I'm going to appeal to those of you, and here comes my shameless self-promotion, <laughs> for those of you that want to work with somebody who can help you turn what we just discussed here into a, a reality, then this is what you need to do. Just head on over to mortgagemarketingcoaching.com. Let me, let me go to that page now and just request your free marketing audit. Now, what a marketing audit is, guys, I, I don't want to misrepresent it. This marketing audit is for those of you folks who are interested in working with me. Okay, If you're wanting to hire me and or my team to help you get these things set up, I'm going to talk to you about those programs that are available because we have everything from done for you to coaching and you know masterminds you know all that fun stuff uh, and I will talk to you about that but first let's let's take a look at the um, uh, the marketing audit so if you head on over to this page all you gotta do is click either fix your biz or you can just kind of scroll down here and click this down here for to request a marketing audit here's what the marketing audit looks like so it's going to bring you to this page here where you just answer the questions so basically what we want to know is what your biggest lead generation challenges are, you know, what, what, what are you currently spending monthly on your marketing, you know, uh, how would you rank your marketing, all of this fun stuff. So basically the more information you give me guys, the more productive our chat can be. 
because let me tell you, I, I don't work with just anyone. Okay. And, and the reason I'm picky guys is because I want to do justice to what you're capable of and vice versa. Right. Is when, when I'm working with the, the, the right mindset, because that's the most important thing to me more than anything else is you got to be in the right mindset and you got to be an action taker. So for the folks that, I mean, I've had some people that'll come in and they'll request strategy sessions every time I do a webinar and, and, you know, three years later, they still have never signed up to work with me because basically what they're wanting to do is they want a sounding board. That's not what this is for. If I look at my records and I see, oh, we've talked five times before and you still haven't taken action. Sorry, we're not going to work together. I'm going to, I'm just going to have to go ahead and decline on that. I only work with about a quarter of the people who request because I'm looking for action takers because we only have a, a what a five to six good weeks left of good origination before the slow season's here. So we've got we've got to be working with folks that are ready to take action now. Okay, <laughs> so um, so if that's you, if you fall in that category, we can help you get these things implemented quickly and in a way that's going to be absolutely explosive for you. You're going to finally capture leads on demand. You're going to find finally have a way to warm them up and to turn those leads into applications, it become self-sufficient. Because I know a lot of you guys are sick and tired of buying leads. <laughs> I sent out I sent out a survey um, about an hour and a half to two hours before this call um, because I wanted to get feedback from you guys to find out really what your biggest challenges are. And that was uh, the number one. I, I got I got about forty of those back. Um, and the out of those 40, 26 individuals chose lead quality as being their biggest concern is that when they capture leads, the quality of the leads kind of suck. That's <laughs> kind of boiling it down to the, the simple here is that, yeah, a lot of the, the, the leads that we're capturing are just terrible quality and that's what their concern is. Or, you know, lead volume is was second close to lead quality was lead volume. You know, okay, well, I can capture leads, but how do I get enough to really see a big boost in my income? And, and these are the types of things that I work with individuals on. Um, I can work in a capacity of coaching. I can work in a capacity of, of, of masterminds or even done for you, hands off for those of you that are, that are too busy. So here's kind of a look at what we do with our coaching guys because um, I'd also mention that you know a, a big announcement is this is my final year. This is my final year coaching loan officers. After that, I will no longer be working with individual loan officers. And the reason for that is um, this past year, over 31% of my business came from larger companies who have been contracting me and my team to lead generate for them on a, on a larger basis. And um, over the next 12 months, at the rate we're going, that figure is going to double. And that just does not leave a lot of time left for me to work with individual loan officers. So this will be your final opportunity to work with me and my team um, in a coaching capacity. It doesn't mean I'm leaving the industry, guys. Don't get me wrong. I will still be offering some, you know, like my, my, my products, you know, as far as, um, you know, my, some of my services in the way of, um, you know, Loan Officer Marketing Lab and, you know, landing pages and tools like that. But it's the coaching that I, I will basically have to kind of step away from that because I'm working with larger companies because they're getting just wonderful results of what we're doing. So uh, final opportunity for those of you who've always wanted to work with us, um, you know, I'd love to chat with you and see if we're a good fit. What we do with our coaching is first things, guys, we remove all the guesswork. And we just go straight to deploying ads that we know work right here, right now. Like I said, we, we do this. I do not teach theory. There's a lot of coaches and trainers and, and self-proclaimed gurus out there, guys. And just fair warning, I, I know the inside scoop with a, a lot of them, and I can tell you that the bulk of what's being taught to loan officers out there has never even been used in the real world. I know where a lot of these guys come from, and I know that the bulk have never been loan officers um, or own their own mortgage companies. And um, a lot of what they're teaching is I know where it originated from, and it's it's theory. It's They learned from someone else who said this is good, and therefore they're teaching it as, oh, this is good. What we do differently, what makes us different, guys, is we deploy this to the tune of hundreds of thousands of dollars in ads because we have big clients that employ us to do all their originations for them. So we get to experiment and use these ads in the real world to the tune of we spend more in a single day than most entire teams of loan officers will spend in the next five years on ads. And that means we get to test and tweak, test and tweak, test and tweak to a really high level. So when, when you coach with me, I'm teaching you what I'm already using 
and no is working. Now, does that mean, does that mean it's always going to work 100% of the time right out of the gate the exact same way all across the board? No, that's not how the real world works. Anybody who claims otherwise is lying to you and engaging in hyperbole. Okay, I'm not going to hype it up and tell you that's how it works. This is real world marketing. But what I can tell you is we're using what works right here, right now, and nine times out of ten, we get the first leads within the very first 24 hours already flowing over. And we're utilizing, um, giving you access to the same tools and technologies that we use. We're giving you access to the exact same ads that we're using, not just the landing pages. Um, you get access to me directly with your questions. If something, you know, uh, isn't making sense or you're running into some challenges or whatever, you will have access to me directly. I'm not going to pawn you off on a bunch of, you know, uh, uh, second tiers over here and there. You know, you're just going to chat with this person or that person. Uh, no, we're going to talk directly. Um, weekly sessions, and we're also going to cover retargeting, so the tracking pixels and tracking cookies. We know how to do it right. There's a lot of people out there teaching you how to do it wrong, and it's going to waste a lot of your money. You're going to blow thousands of dollars. I, in fact, I'm looking at a uh, one of the individuals who did the survey said he spent over $3,000 in ads. He bought and worked with a very, very well-known trainer out there, spent over $3,000 in ads, and didn't even get a single deal out of it. Um, and I, I probably know why. Um, oftentimes it's what's being taught again is theory retargeting and audience building is where it's at and the way a lot of people teach you to do it is really borderline online stalking <laughs> the way they tell you to retarget like stalking they say, oh well you want them to see your 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 face everywhere they go you know what when I see that guys that doesn't make me want to do business with somebody it makes me think wow it's kind of scary I mean this person is literally everywhere that looks a little desperate I mean wouldn't you agree and, and that's the way that a lot of people are being taught to retarget. And, and it, it sounds good maybe on a webinar when you first hear it and they say, oh, yeah, you're going to get all these impressions and they're going to see you everywhere and therefore they're going to remember your name and whatnot. It, it sounds good, but that's not the way people think. That's not the way people shop. You know, maybe once in a while you might get lucky that way, but telling you from experience of spending, having spent millions of dollars in ads over the years, that's typically not how it pans out. And the way most people respond to that is leave me alone. You know, it's just like if you're shopping for a car and that person will not leave. If, if every time you look at the next car, you see that salesperson's face standing right there hovering over you, does that, do you think, man, I really can't wait to work with that smiling face? Or do you think, man, that's obnoxious? <laughs> right? So so we, we're we teaching you real world um application here and, and we'll, we'll give you the retargeting techniques that actually work um, we typically teach techniques at least a year before they're adopt, adopted by the rest of the marketplace before they catch up um, because we're always testing and tweaking to a high level so we're going to teach you what even if it's something we've just learned I'm going to be excited and pass that on to my coaching clients as well and we don't lock anybody into these long-term contracts and whatnot to coaching with us or mastermind because the way I, I my theory or my way of looking at things is this if you're if you're making money by working with me, you're going to keep working with me. If you're not making money, then you shouldn't be forced into working with me. It's that simple. That's that's my uh, motto. So I don't lock anybody into these crazy terms or contracts. Just hey, you know, if you want to hire me on a month to month basis, then absolutely, let's talk about it. So we skip the learning curve and go straight to what's working right here, right now. Okay. So my, my I, I do offer done for you solutions as well for those of you who just say, hey, you know what, um, I wish I had time to learn this, but I don't, so what can I pay you and your team to just do it all for me, you know, and just deliver the leads, you know, it's leads coming in while you sleep, just work the leads, that's all you got to do, let us take care of everything from landing pages to ad copy to split testing, images, campaign deployment, automation, follow-up emails, um, everything, fine-tuning, my team does indeed offer those services as well. And I would be more than happy to chat with you guys about how to generate these leads in your sleep and just let us do it for you. Um, but again, the, the way that you request this uh, strategy session, guys, is you just head on over to um, mortgagemarketingcoaching.com. Again, that's mortgagemarketingcoaching.com. And either click to fix your biz or scroll down to the lower left, request a free marketing audit and just fill in those questions to, to schedule your strategy session. Again, the more information you give me about what you're looking to accomplish and what your biggest challenges are, the more I'm going to be prepared to chat with you. Okay. So, and, and um, I, I always, I know it's a given, but 
I just, I always feel <laughs> obligated to say this. Be honest. Um, if, you know, some people tell me and, and inflate, you know, they're con closing and all this. No, what the, it's, it's real world numbers. When I have real world vision of what you're dealing with and what you're struggling with, the, the better prepared I am to, to, to give you a realistic response. Okay. So I, I know 99% of you guys already know that, but every once in a while I run across something. And so I just throw it out there as a disclaimer. Um, also, after you fill out that questionnaire, you're going to have a, uh, um, an opportunity to, to pick a time and date for your marketing audit. So just kind of give you an example. This is the page you're going to be redirected to. So let's say you wanted to do, oh, I don't know, Tuesday the 19th. So you're just going to click on that, select your time slot, boom, right here, and put in your name, email, phone number, and click to book your appointment, and then I will get a notification of your appointment request. Okay. So, um, and then you'll hear from me typically within 24 hours to confirm and say, okay, I got you on my calendar. You're good to go. All right. So I'd absolutely love to chat with you guys. And, um, and oh, that's right. Um, also, now I'm going to show you guys something really, really cool here. Check this out. Um, so we were talking about, I promised you guys at the end of this call that I would talk to you about the key to, to turning leads into applications or potential loans into apps, um, and 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 here it is. So here's the big secret, guys: is if you really really want to take your leads and start turning them into actual applications and credit pools, the best thing in the world that you can do right now is to start asking for the appointment because I'm going to clue you into something and some terrible, terrible advice that a lot of people and a lot of trainers give to loan officers. And um, and maybe maybe this was true years ago because even years and years back, I used to give similar advice. Um, but uh, about two to three years ago, I stopped because things started changing and evolving in the marketplace. And that is that it's generally taught that you have to make things super easy for the prospect, right? That's generally what we're told is that you can't ask too many questions up front because then they get scared away and blah, blah, blah. Then you're not going to get many leads. Um, so instead, we're taught, um, you know, here's strategies on how to create hundreds and hundreds of leads per month. And that's said as if it's a good thing. But since when has hundreds of leads met hundreds of loans and applications? It doesn't, right? Generally, you got to talk to a huge percentage of those individuals and kiss a lot of frogs to get to the serious prospects. So my solution to this is make, they, make them jump through some extra hoops and actually ask for a phone appointment right there at the point of originating that lead. And the people who continue on and do that process are the people who are your cherry-picked hot leads. See, take a look at these notifications in my inbox. Um, I started doing this for a particular client and just right out of the gate. At the end of his first week, we had 47 leads captured. Um, I, I'm sorry, not 47 leads, 47 appointments. We had a lot more leads than that, um, but appointments. Now, to be fair, this is a loan officer who has a team or a, uh, you know, he has a team of loan officers underneath him. So that's why he can handle that volume. For the typical loan officer, this would be way, 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 way overkill. But when you have a whole team of loan officers to keep busy, you know, you, you can definitely afford to have more appointments scheduled because you can keep up with it. Um, but these are the notifications, just boom, 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 boom. So the, the key here is that you're never going to get the appointment if you don't ask for it. So we actually ask them to commit to just like, just like the page for my strategy session, where I'm asking you to look at my calendar and pick a time, pick a date, put your phone number in. That's what we're asking the leads to do as well. So this is what happens when you ask for the appointment. Now, to be fair, only about 10 to 15, maybe 20% if you're lucky, are going to follow through that final step and schedule a phone appointment. But that's good because it's filtering out the less serious leads and telling you, hey, here's the hottest leads. Now, it doesn't mean we ignore the other leads that didn't take the time to schedule the appointment. No, no, no. That would be a mistake because there's still some gold in that list. But isn't it nice to step into the office on a Monday and see that you have five people who have actually scheduled phone appointments to talk to you and actually went through your calendar, picked the time and date, uh, put in their name, put in their email, put in their phone number and ask you, hey, yeah, please call. Me. Because now you have leads that when you call them are actually expecting and looking forward to hearing from you as opposed to your typical, you know, uh, lead that maybe you, if you buy leads, how many of you guys have called the people and go, who are you? Why are you calling me? 
you're the ninth guy to call me today. Blah, 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 blah. Now they're frustrated and irritated. Where'd you get my number? Click. No, these are people who actually took the time to schedule the appointment so they know exactly who you are and they know exactly what they're doing. They're not tricked into an appointment. They are jumping through that hoop. But the key is we have to give them reasons that they need to talk to you. You can't just say, oh, yeah, wouldn't it be nice to schedule a phone appointment? No. No, 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 no. We're salespeople here, guys. Sell it. <laughs> Sell the appointment. If I were a prospect right here, right now, looking at you saying, hey, why, you know, what are the advantages? Why can't I just do this, you know, through email? Why, why do I, why should I talk to you? What are the advantages to, to picking up the phone and calling you? How would you answer that? If you can't answer that, if you can't give a convincing reason for that, then do you even believe that it's in their best interest? <laughs> then we, we need to question ourselves if we don't have a good response to that. It's like, ah, oh, you know, maybe I need to sit down and do a, a sales and marketing audit of why I'm in this business and what I'm bringing to the table. Because there's got to be a good reason why they would benefit from a phone conversation with you. We can't beat around the bush can't be cavalier about it. We have to build that rapport. And typically we do that through video. Just like you see, I have a video right there on my page asking for that strategy session appointment. It's because people connect better. You get a better conversion rate when you have a video versus just a, a big block of text. Fewer people read and more people watch. And then once, once they have taken that step, I use the formula of confirm, remind, and reward. So confirm means they're going to instantly get an email from me saying, hey, thank you so much for scheduling the appointment, blah, 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 letting them know, yes, yes, indeed, I, I'm looking forward to meeting you at this exact time and date, you know, let them know because otherwise they're wondering, you know, well, does that mean I got the appointment? Well, what happens now? So we got to confirm it. Two, remind them. So I'm going to have my autoresponder set to send out at least two or three reminder emails, just like you probably got reminders for the webinar. Right? You can see I'm, I'm following my own advice here. And then reward. Reward is that you over-deliver. You always, always, always over-deliver because that's how you're setting the bar. So um, I might send them a video or an email with something that they didn't expect to get, some extra tidbits and advice or an infographic or an extra video with, you know, oh, hey, by the way, while you're waiting for your appointment, I thought you might enjoy this quick you know, three-minute breakdown video that describes some of the misconceptions and myths about zero-down you know, mortgage loans out there that maybe you've seen around the web, you know, giving you bad advice or this, this or that, or here's the truth about this, here's the truth about Over deliver. Give them more than what was promised. And, and that way, when they're actually excited when they talk to you. It's like, well, you know, this guy's obviously full of good information. If that's the free stuff and we haven't even gotten on the call yet, wow, I can't wait. You make them look forward to talking to you, right? So do you guys see the value in this type of a formula for your, your follow-up? It's, it's, it's a little different than what most people do, isn't it? But it works. It absolutely works. Because we're, we're not relying on just random uh, randomness here. We're not relying on blending in and looking like everybody else at this point. Instead, we're over-delivering, we're going above and beyond, and we're asking them things, and we're asking them for commitments. Even if they're just micro-commitments, those micro-commitments get you closer to the sale. Okay? So again, if, if these are the types of processes that you would like to see implemented in your business, um, see, I, I would love to sit here and talk to you about specific products, and specific. but here's the thing is, with my services, with my coaching, and with my done for you guys, we don't believe in off the shelf. I don't try to pigeonhole everybody into the same solutions. That's why I talk to every single prospect before I offer to work with them is I want to make sure that I can legitimately help you, that you're going to get bang for your buck and be positive ROI and absolutely just crushing it, hitting a home run. Because we know everybody's got their own little challenges and struggles that they deal with. So that's why I also warn people in advance, if, if you're looking for bargain basement cheap, then don't fill out the request form because that's, that's not the, the field that I play in. Remember, I typically work with companies, but I also do work with individual loan officers as well, um, but I'm, I'm not going to be bargain basement cheap because what we do works, guys, 
um, when we sent out that survey prior to the call, the average response for how much money is it costing you on a yearly basis to not have your, your marketing fine-tuned, the average answer was 100 grand. I had some of you guys say 200 grand, uh, even have one that was four, four to 500 grand. So people wanting solutions that can help them close an extra six figures or even quarter or even half a million a year and then say, oh, well, I want something that's you know, less than 500 bucks or less than a thousand. You know, well, that's not really a good ROI for me now, is it? <laughs> if I'm helping you grow your business to the tune of 100 Gs um, and, then, and then somebody wants to pay me peanuts, we're not a good fit. You know, so I, I, again, I just let people know up front, you know, we're, we're not, we're not hurting. We're, we typically have a very big backlog of individuals wanting to work with us. And this is our final year of working with individual loan officers. So I'm picking the best of the best, the guys who are ready to take action and uh, ready to commit. Okay. So, and if you commit to me, I will commit to you and your business and won't stop until we, we get you rolling. Okay. So I'm, I'm stoked. I mean, I, I can't wait to chat with you guys and uh, help you grow your businesses, uh, whether that be through done for you or one-on-one -on -one coaching, or we have some kick butt masterminds. Our masterminds are um, our most affordable options. So because they tend to be more of a group atmosphere. So it, it's, you know, I don't want to scare people away into thinking that we're some outrageously expensive either. You know, we do have some solutions that, can, that we can probably, um, you know, custom tailor for those of you, um, you know, that might, uh, you know, be bootstrapping it a little bit. But again, it's, it's still not going to be bargain basement cheap, but it's definitely more affordable and can still get you some pretty, pretty killer lead generation strategies out there. Um, and there's some really neat stuff on the horizon, guys, um, that we're working with right now, just to kind of give you a, a nice taste of what we have coming down the pipe. Um, is right now what we're working on is a series of uh, very, very advanced interactive landing pages with instant feedback calculators built in um, that give responses and have um, uh, smart targeting built within the landing page itself. Now, that might sound like a bunch of technical jargon, but let me, let me just tell you, it's, it's pretty friggin' cool. And the best way I can describe it is if you look at the big, the big, big, big companies out there that spend, you know, a million and a half, two million, three, even four million a month on their, on their ads to generate leads, um, some of the technology that they're using, we're, we're, we're going to be giving you the same technology that they have access to. And, and they're, believe me, they're using that technology because it works. You don't spend a couple million a month on ads if it's not giving you a positive ROI, right? So uh, we, we, we know how it works. And uh, that technology will make available to you guys. So pretty cool, huh? <laughs> um, so yeah, that's one thing that I'm really, really excited about. We'll, we'll be rolling that out here just in a matter of weeks. We're actually uh, we've already been doing it in some um, smaller markets to kind of test it first, and then we're going to be rolling it out into the bigger markets. So it'll be available to you very, very soon. So those of you that get in now are going to be the guys that get access to those types of tools as we go along. Okay, so. Um, any, if there's any questions on some of the, the strategies and techniques that I talked about up to now, guys, um, it's definitely a, um, a, a good opportunity to get those questions answered now. So, all right. So let me take a look. I'm scrolling through here. All right. So John was asking, how do I actually drop a cookie? Um, <clears throat> John, the, the way you do that is um, through that. Let me let me actually take a step back before I answer that, and let me clear something up. When I use the term tracking cookie, keep in mind that tracking cookies can come from different places. Facebook, I showed you guys the tracking cookie that can come from Facebook, but there's a lot of CRM softwares and email marketing softwares that also provide you with tracking cookies. So typically, the way you drop it is you just take the code, kind of like what I showed you through Facebook. And when you insert it onto your, your web page that you're going to be driving your traffic to, when somebody visits that web page is when that little code instructs your web page to automatically drop that tracking cookie. So it's all done automatically. Once you insert that code onto the page, it takes care of everything from there. You never have to touch that again unless you want to. Okay? So it all happens automatically behind the scenes once it's set up. That's why I was kind of harping on the fact that, hey, you know, even if you don't know, if this all looks like gobbledygook to you, 
or technical jargon that makes your eyes roll in the back of your head, that's fine. It's still worth just just pay somebody 30, 40 bucks who knows what they're doing to do it for you. And it'll be money well spent because it'll all happen automatically from there once once everything's set up. You know, and that's that's something that I help folks with um, to through, uh, you know, my coaching and programs as well. So, uh, so yeah, Michael was asking us, so in order for someone to get our tracking cookie, uh, they would have to had to respond to our marketing. Uh, yeah, and, and respond being a relative term or just clicked on something. You decide how you, you want that process to happen, meaning tracking cookies are flexible. They're very, very flexible. You can instruct them to turn on when somebody just clicks on one of your ads and just goes to your landing page. Or if you want to be stricter about it, you could tell it to only drop on individuals that have, you know, filled out a request, you know, and given you their name and email and phone number or read a particular article or watched a particular video. So you can make that tracking cookie fire or activate at any point. That's the power of it. Okay, that's what makes it so cool. Uh, yeah, Sean. Yeah, but yeah, exactly. So, so yeah, different costs and options and all that fun stuff. That's what we discussed during the strategy sessions. Um, just because we, we cust everything that we do is pretty much you know kind of custom tailored to to you. You know, we don't just make random recommendations. We want to talk to you and make sure that what we're recommending is indeed the best for you. Um, you know, if we feel like we can help you with your goals, because there are some folks where I go, you know what, I'm not the best fit for you. And I'm, I will be the first person to tell you that because trust me, we, we're not even close to hurting for clients. Um, you know, generally speaking, we're, we're a bit overwhelmed with, with people on waiting lists. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's, if I feel like I'm not a good fit for you, I will be the first person to tell you that, but I'm more than happy to make recommendations of individuals who might be a good fit for you if I feel like there's some sort of service out there that might work for you. Um, okay. Let's see. Uh, is there a replay? Okay. Um, yes, yes, I will. Um, I did record it, and most of the time, most of the time go to webinar does a good job. Uh, every once in a while, it... it <laughs> just kind of implodes and doesn't doesn't actually record or gets a little goofy with me. But yeah, um, I did I did click record at the beginning of the call, so I'll try to make that available to you guys tonight. Okay? So for those of you who kind of got in late, yes, I will I will definitely email out a uh, a link for you. All right. Good, good, good. Okay. Uh, Chad, how long does your coaching typically last? Um, yeah, that's that's a great question, and typically, typically speaking, it, it depends. And I am not trying to be vague. I promise. Uh, my my reason for saying that is it depends on which program I recommend. I, I have some that can go on as long as you want, like my mastermind programs. Um, I have some people who've been on them for a whole year now, and they they never cancel because as long as they're turning a, a positive ROI and they're constantly learning new stuff, then they remain a member. Um, my one-on-one -on -one coachings tend to be only 30 to 60 days. Um, I, I don't I don't extend those because here's the deal, guys. With my training, I'm not here trying to milk you for every penny. That's not my intention with my coaching. My coaching is, you know what? This stuff can seem complex and complicated, but it's actually it's not rocket science. If if you know what you're doing, if you get the basics down, it's actually simpler than you think. So. It doesn't take most loan officers, most loan officers, you guys are pretty smart dudes, right? You guys are smart people. So you guys catch on pretty quick. So especially if we're working one-on-one, -on -one, um, there's no distractions. So I can pass that information on to you and you're going to progress a lot quicker. So you generally don't need more than 45 to 60 days to really have a good handle on everything and have everything structured so that all you got to do is put it on autopilot. That's it. So why should I keep charging you for coaching on an ongoing basis if you can get everything up and running and fine-tuned in 45 to 60 days, right? So that's the way my co my actual coaching works with my masterminds, though. Um, we cover – my masterminds are generally for all things lead generation. So that means realtor lead generation. That means physical lead generation. That means Facebook lead generation. That means YouTube lead generation. So – you're constantly learning new things with my mastermind because that's the point behind it. So that's ongoing for as long as you want or it can be as short as you want. I have some guys that come in and just stick around for a month or two and they say because, hey, I'm just coming in for the Facebook portion because that's all I want. Other people say, hey, you know what? 
I really like the idea of using YouTube ads and, and Google ads and Yahoo ads and realtor ads and you know, all this other stuff. So they'll stick around because they're constantly building and scaling. It just depends how big do you want to grow. If all you want to do is get an extra two or three closings a month, it's, you're going to be there very quickly for most of you. Um, others, if you want to do 10, 15, 20 extra, okay, you're going to need to stick around for maybe five or six months because that's a lot of scaling. I'm, I'm realistic. I'm not one of those gurus that's going to promise and say, oh, yeah, you can be there in 30 days or less and add, add an extra 10 to 15. I, I saw that ad the other day. You know, yeah, within the next 60 days, you'll be closing an extra 10 to 15 loans every single month. And I, I just had to break out laughing going, yeah, that's, that's really pie in the sky. Who actually believes that that's realistic? This is the real world we operate in. You know, there's, there's been flukes where maybe one person pulled that off because all the stars aligned, but that's not a realistic expectation for anyone. Scaling, this is a real business. When you're talking 10 to 15 extra closings a month on top of what you're doing now, you're talking a very big income. That doesn't happen overnight, not if it's being structured properly. If you want something that's going to be a house of cards that falls apart, okay, yeah, I can help you ultra fast. If all you want is a money scheme, if you want a business, it takes a little bit longer to get there, but we can still do it. It's still very, very doable. Don't get me wrong, but I want to, I want realistic expectations. So that's what I'm all about. All right. So great questions here, guys. So I'm, I'm, I'm loving it. So let's see what else I got. Give me just a moment. I'm, I'm scrolling through here. It seems like the, <laughs> I get, I, I'm getting a lot of questions on the tracking cookies. Um, I, I know, I know it can seem complicated, but he, here's, here's a secret for you. Um, if you pay somebody to do it, they'll probably have it done inside of 10 minutes. That's, that's how quick and easy it is. It's, it looks difficult if, if you're not familiar with code and whatnot. Which, which a lot of us aren't, and you know, I, I remember those days when I wasn't as well, and I would have looked at that and said, holy crap, that's scary. But if you get somebody that's familiar with coding, for them it's, it's going to be really, really easy. So um, I promise. So just just make sure you get it done because it's, it's definitely worth it, I promise you. Okay? All right. Uh, bum, bum, bum. Companies. Okay, so Linda. So Okay, so, so yeah, you gave me the company name there. Um, honestly, I, I, I really couldn't say at, at this point, I, I get, I, I get a lot of my strategy sessions are with the owners of companies as well as individual loan officers. So in advance, I, I can't tell you, um, if that's, if that's one that I'm going to be working with next year or not. Um, I just, I just take them on, on a, a first come first serve basis. So I, I wish I could tell you for certain. And if I, if I did know, I would tell you, <laughs> um, okay. So I'm still scrolling through. Okay, so, okay, what do you recommend as an ad spend? Um, that's a wonderful question, Tom. And it's it's a, it's a little bit difficult to answer just because how much you spend on your ads is going to depend on so many different variables. A, how much do you want to scale your business? B, what niche are you going after? In other words, if you're coming to me saying, hey, I want to go after reverse mortgages versus general purchase or refinance, or I mean, each one of those is a different market with, with its own like miniature economy <laughs> of scale. So what, what I recommend would, uh, what you spend would definitely be in proportion to what niche you're going after and what part of the country you're in. So let's say you're in, in how much you spend in California or, or Manhattan, New York is going to be very different from what somebody in you know, rural Indiana maybe would, would spend on an ad. So uh, what I can do is kind of give you a range. Um, I, some individuals, some of my clients are only spending about $250, $300 a month on their ads. But then I got guys spending, you know, uh, and we're I'm, I'm talking and limiting to just individual loan officers now. But I have individual loan officers that will spend 1000 1200 a month on their ads. You know, but those are usually guys with a team. So they have loan officers underneath them that they're, so that's why they're spending so much. Uh, because most loan officers, even at a couple hundred bucks, um, that's usually going to get you a, a pretty good amount of, of traction. So, okay. Um, so I see a hand raised here. Uh, Kirby, was that uh, was that intentional? Were you were you wanting to verbally um, ask a question? I'm, I'm just asking to make sure because I know some folks will accidentally raise their hand. Um, so just let me know in the chat box if that was um, in, intentional or, or not. I'm just making sure. So I'm not unmuting somebody who didn't want to, who didn't want to chat. 
Um, yeah, we, we uh, yeah, the replay, yes. Yes to that, absolutely. So I'll be, I'll be trying, don't, don't, don't hold me to this, guys. It's not set in stone yet. I will try my best <laughs> to get the replay out to you uh, this evening, okay? But oftentimes my evenings are pretty, pretty jam-packed, so that's why I, I try not to overpromise. So I, I will definitely try, though. So I, I will do my best to get you those replays. So in, any any uh, questions that I missed, guys, now it's time to ask. So you, you have my attention. So um, I, I think I see a lot, a lot of you guys stuck around for um, a pretty long time here for this Q&A session. So if, if I'm missing any questions, there's no such thing as a bad question, guys. I'm, I'm all yours. I'm more than happy to answer your questions. So if I missed your question, I apologize. There's a ton of them here. And I've been scrolling through trying to see which ones I've answered versus which ones I haven't. So... Feel free to go ahead and pop it in there. And, okay, here's uh, one on the uh, Canadian market. Um, yes, I do. I do work with folks in the Canadian market as well. I am aware that there are some there are some subtle differences between the Canadian market and the U.S. market, specifically in the types of uh, product that you can offer. And um, I know this because I've I've done I've, I've worked with uh, loan officers and, and companies in the Canadian market before. So yes, it is definitely something we can do in Canada. Um, I'll tell you the places that I do this in. Um, I, I work with folks in Australia. I work with folks in the UK. Um, I work with folks in Canada. Um, I work with folks in about eight different countries. Okay, so and and there are definitely some differences in the marketplaces, but overall, overall, the beauty of it is is the mindset of the client of the prospect tends to be the same. The problems and the questions. And the concerns that they have tend to be pretty universal because people are people are people, right? So even if the products and the solutions themselves are different, the the, the concerns and the mindset of the prospects tend to be the same. So yes, I can I can um, help you uh, regardless of your market. And if if I do think though, if I think that we're in a market that I'm not going to be able to help you in uh, for whatever reason, then I will I will tell you I'm not going to take your money um, and then and then use you as a guinea pig. That's that's not how I work. If I'm if I'm telling you I can help you, it's because I've, I've helped in um, that scenario before, and I feel 100% confident that, um, that I can do that for you, okay? So it's, it's all about integrity and keeping, keeping my clients happy, okay? You don't stick around for 12 years by being a fly-by-night and just taking everybody's money and running. <laughs> yeah, we've been doing this for 12 years, guys. We've been in the, the market with uh, training loan officers and doing done for you for 12 years. So, so we got the history. All right. So, um, any any other questions I can I can um, answer for you, if, and guys, it doesn't just have to be about my services. It can also be about some of the strategies that I was teaching. It can also be about, um, uh, especially the, um, the, the the conversion, converting your leads into um, um, applications, because I know that's really a big concern for a lot of loan officers. Is it's like, well, you know, I can capture all the leads in the world, but if they suck. <laughs> if they're not turning into applications, then what good do they do me? So I'm, I'm more than happy to help you um, with that and uh, answer some questions about that. Because that is something that is something that we had to struggle with in the beginning, too. Is It, it took a lot of testing and tweaking to really figure that one out. So, Okay, so Chad, what kind of budget should one plan for uh, getting at least 10 hot leads? So... My answer to that would be it, it depends on what you consider a, a hot lead, okay? Um, so let me, let me explain to you what, what I view as a lead. Uh, what, what I view as a lead is I kind of put them in different categories because some people will consider a lead just anybody who clicks on your ad, and, and that's not me. I do not consider that a lead. That's a prospect. That's not a lead. That's an audience member. That's not a lead. A lead is somebody who uh, we generally make them – answer eight fields of data, name, email, phone number, how much money um, do you want to spend, how much down payment do you have, what's your credit look like, blah, 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 right? That's generally what I consider a, a good lead, is somebody that's taken the time to fill out all that. So to capture 10 of those, um, I mean, in some markets, you're not even going to spend 100 bucks to do that. I mean, you might, you might uh, spend 50, 60 bucks to do that in some markets. Other markets, you might spend 150 or 250 bucks to do that. It, it depends on your niche and how much competition you have. Now, then I have hotter leads. The hotter leads are the people that um, actually 
answer all eight of those fields of data and give you their name, email, phone number, and blah, blah, blah. But then they also go and schedule the phone appointment with you. So if that's what you're talking about, the people who have scheduled actual phone appointments for you, um, for those individuals, um, generally, uh, uh, the, 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 the low conversion rate is about 10% of the individuals that, that become your leads will go to that next step and actually schedule a phone appointment with you. Um, and then some, some folks will be all the way up to 20 to 25%. Okay. So that's, uh, that's generally what we're looking for there. Um, so about anywhere from 10 to 20, 25% will turn into the, the really hot leads. Those, those are your cherry pick lay down deals because those are the guys that are going to be on the phone with you. <laughs> um, and then, and then as far as how many will turn into closings, that's something that unfortunately I cannot answer because the numbers are all over the place because it 100% it depends on you as the loan officer. I have some clients that have absolutely awesome, amazing closing skills. And then I have folks that have abysmal closing skills, you know, but they're just consistent. So, you know, they'll, you know, kiss enough frogs to get to the closings. Um, and, and let me, let me tell you um, a story here. I actually had, <laughs> And this makes me laugh. Um, this was about three years ago. Um, I had two clients that were both targeting the exact same market, exact same niche, exact same market, just by happenstance. It rarely, rarely happens, but for whatever reason, it happened here. And and they were um, one guy was um, when when he contacted me, he was already in the top 250 loan officers in the country. You know, he'd already been in the the mortgage originator. Uh, list three years in a row. He he was a uh, man. He was awesome because he he had his follow up dialed in and automated and whatnot. And all he wanted was you know he wanted to work with us because he said he needed to scale and wanted even more leads. And then I had another guy who was only closing about three or four deals a month. You know, but you know he, he was still confident that he could maybe you know get to about six to seven. You know, he didn't need a whole lot because in California you only need, you don't need to close a lot of loans to get you know make a lot of money, right? But they're both targeting the same market and. The one guy, the reason he was only at three or four deals a month was because his follow-up sucked. You know, I hate to say it, but he would take a day and a half to two days to get back with his leads. And every time I talked to him about that, he would say, well, you know, it's just I'm so busy, blah, blah, blah. And I've talked to him about automating and all this and that. Here's how you do it. Here's what you need to do. And But, you know, he didn't want to pay to have it done for you because, well, I could just do it myself. You know, but he would never do it. So it was frustrating, but, you know, it is what it is. But... He actually came back to me and said, man, these leads suck, Chad. What's the matter with you? Blah, blah. And he just kept blaming it on me saying, well, the leads just really suck. This doesn't work. But I was laughing because the other guy came back to me and said, I closed an extra seven deals this month, and I spent less than a grand and a half to do it. You know, a grand and a half to close seven deals at the numbers he was dealing with, his average closing was over 650000 <laughs> the guy was making out money hand over fist, laughing all the way to the bank, doing the exact same thing the other guy was. The other guy saying, well, the, the market sucks and, you know, the strategy sucks. No, it's you're taking a day and a half to follow up. So you got to automate your follow up. The, the key to how much it's going to cost you to get a closing is going to be directly in proportion to how well you follow up and and follow what we teach you. Okay. If you utilize video, if you utilize voice drops, and if you utilize SMS, you're going to kill it. You're going to crush it. That's the proper way to follow up. You got to use a multi-pronged approach. But most loan officers never get to that point unless they unless they just pay us to do it for them, right? And I'm not saying that because I want everybody to pay us to do. It. I'm just telling you guys the reality. That's the situation. Is most people say, "Well, I'll just do it myself," you know. But there's that opportunity cost. Six months down the road, they're still saying, "Well, I'll I'll still do it myself. I'm just been too busy." You know, but they're they're costing themselves money by not doing it. Even if you don't pay me to do it, just pay somebody. Just go out and hire a developer. I don't care who you hire. Just hire somebody to do it because that is your money. That's your income is in the follow-up. So how much it costs you to get a closing is all over the board. Some guys um, I got you know are getting a closing for every 250 bucks they spend. Some guys they have to spend a thousand bucks. I have one guy who has to spend two grand. But then again, he's doing reverse mortgages, so he's making a whole lot more money per closing, so he kind of doesn't really care. If I can take $2,000 and turn it into six and a half, uh, I'm going to do that all day long. I'm not going to worry and cry about the fact that I had to spend two grand because I walked away with six and a half. So it's, it's ROI. It's getting into that ROI mindset. 
So, but we got to know our, our, our metrics. That's why at the beginning of the call, you know, I didn't want to bore you guys to tears, but I was talking about the, uh, the doing a self-marketing audit and learning your own numbers and metrics because all these things I'm talking about, you know, how much should you be spending on a per lead, on a per cost, on a per this, on a per that basis. It all depends. Depends on your metrics. So you got to know it. Make sense? Awesome, guys. Awesome, guys. So you got it. You got it. ROI is very important. Uh, investment becomes easier and easier to scale. You got it, guys. That's, that's Couldn't have said it better myself. So if there's nothing else, then I thank you guys for sticking around, uh, listening to me chat here, and I hope you guys have uh, walked away with some good information. I know we covered a lot, especially at the beginning of the call. Uh, we kind of rapid fire went through some, some really cool steps and some unique ways to approach your market. So um, for those of you who request a strategy session with me, uh, thank you very much. I look forward to chatting with you, and I hope we're a good fit. I look forward to helping you close more loans. If not, if nothing else, if nothing else, at least, if you're not, if we're not going to chat, at least take action on what you've learned here today. Okay, if you stuck around this long with me, I'm assuming you learned something. <laughs> All right, so at least implement. Do yourself a favor because what I showed you here today absolutely works, I, I assure you. Okay, it's sound marketing fundamentals one-on-one, but you got to take action. All right, so uh, thanks again for joining me today, guys. I'll get that replay out ASAP. You guys have an awesome rest of your day. An awesome rest of your week and an awesome weekend all at the same time. All right. Bye, guys.